Welcome to the Choosing Simple Podcast. I'm your host, Amy Fuel. Modern day life can be hard to navigate, but even a simple homestead life can be, well, not so simple. In the Choosing Simple Podcast, we talk about embracing raw emotions and real life in moments of motherhood, womanhood, and this homesteading lifestyle. Simplicity doesn't just happen. It's a choice we have to make every single day. So whether you're a tired mama washing dishes at 11 p.m., or a woman gardener battling bugs, this podcast is for you. Let's talk about real life. Let's talk about choosing simple in today's podcast. All right, so this podcast episode is going to be really fun. Um, if you are not aware, you can watch the video of this podcast recording on my YouTube channel. And that actually may be where you're watching it and listening to it now, in which case it's just me, a bobblehead, talking into the camera. Uh, I was going to have some examples of some of the things that we're going to go over, but I just thought, you know what, I'm just going to read off my list. And today's topic, we are talking about some unique things that you may not have considered for mm, a crisis situation or the impending apocalypse, you know, but that people talk about. Uh, unique things you may need for end of the world scenarios, right? Uh, whether an EMP or government craziness or whatever. Um, whatever narrative and whatever simulation you want to throw in there, just throw it in there. So uh, I'm not going to get all political on that. But I do want to go over some things because let me tell you what prompted this. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, our friend, may he rest in peace, we miss him so much, um, he was a retired uh, military I'll just say that and he handed me a book called one second after and he said you really need to read this book he actually handed it to my husband and then my husband reiterated that and my husband is not a reader and so he handed it to me and said you read this and you tell me what it's about and I could not put the book down and I generally I love to read but I could not put this book down this this book was just it just sucked me right in and the reason it sucked me in was because it went through, it's it's the timeline story of an EMP or something like it going off, um, which can happen from anything. It doesn't have to be war related. It can even be from solar flares. And basically the story of this town trying to survive, there's no electric. If you don't know what happens with an EMP, it can be a temporary or permanent thing where there's no electricity. No cell phones, no cell phone service, no electricity of any kind. Your cars won't work like modern day cars because everything is electric. Anything that has to do with electricity will not work. It just fries it up. And so can you imagine life without no electricity? It would definitely look a lot different. And so it went through that. What did life look like? And there were a lot of hard things in that book that I would have never thought about. Like one of the examples is um, a nursing home. There was a nursing home that I... If I remember right, it was his mother-in-law that was in. Uh, his wife had since been deceased. Um, and he went to the nursing home to get her to bring her back home. And in just a couple of days' time, all the nurses had left. Everything was really disgusting, as you can imagine a nursing home would be. And so it, it was a very visual book of what would it look like if this happened and how do we navigate through it? I'm going to link it in the show notes so you can find that. I encourage every single person in the universe to read that book because it prepared us more than we were already prepared um, by actually reading a story of how it might look. And it goes into, you know, protecting their home, protecting their town, um, starvation and, and food and medicine and, and attacks from other people. And it was just... It's a great book. It's part of a trilogy. Um, you don't have to read the whole thing, but especially read the first book one second after. And so when I was reading that book a couple of years ago, um, I made some notes of, of things that I had never really thought about we might need in the case that we couldn't get anything. You know, we, there, there would be no stores. They'd be looted. Um, there would be no pharmacies. There'd be nothing, nothing like that. But I want to go over the unique things. I'm not going to list out all the things that I wrote down, um, but I want to go over the unique things, okay? Um, and, and first and foremost, one of the most important things I found in this book, the unique thing was when it came to people, like at, at one point this town had to choose what people 
what outside people that were traveling, because it was near an interstate, what outside people that are coming here do we keep and what outside people do we send on their way? And they decided to keep the people who had skills. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. So skills like uh, electrical, plumbing, um, healthcare, uh, sewing, you know, seamstresses, uh, farmers, people who had skills of various different things, EMTs and um, even just something as simple as being an electrician. Those things were so invaluable. They, they were that town chose to keep the people that were passing through that wanted to stay there. They only kept the people that had skills that could, um, before things got really bad, uh, you know, and they sent everybody else on the rail. Like, Hey, go to the big next town, go there. There's more stuff there for you. And so whatever it is that you're doing, I know a lot of us are trying to hone in on our skill sets and what things we like to do, what things we don't like to do, things we want to learn how to do. Consider that. Consider uh, expanding your skills that you have. Um, and also consider the skills that you might already have that are very valuable in an end of the world scenario like that. Um, my husband is a tradesman. He is an electrician and he works on HVAC. He also is a handyman. He is an estate maintenance manager. You know, those types of things. They're valuable, very valuable. And so don't second guess yourself when it comes to your skills. And definitely expand them as you can. Uh, next thing that I really, really thought about were books and magazines. See those books behind me if you're on YouTube? Uh, there, That's not even all of them. Um, books and magazines and printed material are so important. Because in this book, what these people were discovering is that they couldn't Google how to do something anymore. They couldn't Google how to plant food. They couldn't Google how to cut hair. You know, when we went through the pandemic, everybody was Googling everything and watching stuff on YouTube. How do I do this? How do I do that? Guess what? That wouldn't exist anymore. So how are you going to learn? You're going to learn the old fashioned way by reading books and reading magazines. One of the things that I love to do is find old farm magazines and old agricultural magazines at antique stores. And if they're in the right price range, then I will often grab them. I will pick them up and bring them home with me because um, it's such valuable information that I don't know when I might need. All right, so the next thing is a sewing machine and not a sewing machine like a modern one, more like a sewing machine. Let me see if I can show you. Right here behind me, it's an old treadle sewing machine. And in the book, they had to repurpose clothing right and they had to make new clothing out of old clothing or clothing that didn't fit and, and things like that and so obviously a modern sewing machine isn't going to work because it has to hook up to electric and so finding one of these old sewing machines one of these treadle antique sewing machines those treadle sewing machines that have the foot power um are really important because you can buy multiple um cables for them to keep them on hand and all you have to do is replace that band that's in that treadle sewing machine and you have a working sewing machine and so you can buy these for like 60 bucks they're antiques um 60 bucks or less at most antique shops or on facebook marketplace and then you can purchase the bands that go around them and other sewing equipment for that sewing machine very inexpensively and so consider getting that it's not just decorative it's actually purposeful as well uh, next thing is reloading equipment. Um, if you don't know what that is, like you can reload your own ammunition. They couldn't buy ammunition, so they had to make their own ammunition and reload their own ammunition. And so if you are um, concerned about ammunition or or you don't have a stockpile of it, um, you know, you can buy reloading equipment and sometimes you can find it for free or cheap on Facebook Marketplace or, or Craigslist or whatever, any of these yard sale sites. Um, and so definitely a skill that you could have um, in, in a time like that. Next product you might not think about is reusable canning supplies. When 2020 hit, I bought about almost 300 reusable canning lids and the bands to go with them and extra bands to go with them. So I made that investment in 2020 when we were running out of canning lids because here's the reality. Uh, finding stuff that is reusable in general in a situation like this is really good because eventually 
Um, we will get things up and running again. We'll have a new normal. We'll start making things. People are smart, right? But it could take years. It could take years for canning supplies to come about again uh, after a situation like that. And so uh, reusable canning supplies is important and canning jars. Um, you know, every time I go to the farm store or every time I go to Walmart, which is not often. So so when I say that, you might think, well, I go to Walmart every week. I don't. I don't. I don't go to Walmart every week. I don't even go to the farm store every week. It might be once a month. Um, but when I do go, I grab a box of canning jars. And so I posted a photo a few weeks back of all my canning jars, <laughs> which is not even all of them, um, storage that I had downstairs in my basement. And everybody was like, oh, my gosh, that's where all the canning jars went. Mm, no, that has just been something I've done since 2020 because I saw shortages coming. And so I will grab a box when I see them, so different sizes. So making sure you have that stuff on hand is really important. Uh, the next item I have are maps. Maps of your area, your outer lying areas. And one of the things that we do, I know this might sound crazy, but... We are these people. Uh, we actually, if we know that we're going on a trip, we will actually purchase maps uh, of the area that we're traveling through and that we are going to. Uh, we did that um, on our last trip to Tennessee. And so that if an EMP or something like that were to ever hit while we were somewhere else, we would have a map and we know that we only have about 48 hours to get back home. Um, so we kind of stay in that walking range wherever we go as much as possible. And we have our map with us because again, you're not going to be able to Google how to get home if you're stuck somewhere else. Uh, to add on to that, you should really be taking a go bag with you wherever you go. Uh, even if you're traveling, uh, long distances or short distances, because you never know where you're going to be, even if it's just an hour away. But what if it's raining and it's dark? You know, those are things to think about to, to have with you. Okay, next thing is a wood cook stove. So I actually just purchased one of these, again, found it on Facebook Marketplace. Um, Facebook is good for some things, y'all, and mostly it's to find stuff cheap that you can buy. But you're not going to have access to your stove anymore. And so a wood burning cook stove, which a lot of people have already uh, in the homesteading world, great for heat and great for cooking inside. If you don't have a wood stove hookup inside, you can set up an area outside to use your wood cook stove as well. It just kind of makes things a little bit easier to cook on rather than an open fire uh, or whatnot. Again, you can find these for fairly inexpensive. You don't need a brand new one for thousands of dollars. Um, I got mine for a few hundred bucks on Facebook and it's uh, going to be hooked up in our basement uh, where that fireplace is in the basement. Uh, next thing is kind of a general broad range of things, uh, which is luxury items that make you feel normal. So one of the things in the book that that was apparent is for mental health, um, people really freaked out when they ran out of the everyday commodities that they that make them feel normal, right? Like lotion or makeup or um, which I don't wear makeup, but, um, you know, those types of things that they use that, that are, they're really not necessary, but, uh, they just make you feel good about yourself. And then rationing those out would be what you would have to do in a case like that. But just having extra of those items on hand so that it's not as hard on your mental health, uh, when you start rationing it out well, is great. I mean, it, the amount of, um, turmoil, I think that could happen on your mentality. Some people, not everybody. Um, it, it can take a toll, mental health can, when it comes to things like that. So things that normalize your life again to the previous normal, uh, not the, as you adjust to the new normal. Next thing is a home birth kit. Now here is the irony in that. Uh, in 2021, so last year, in, I think it was in June of last year, I bought the biggest home birth kit that I could purchase. Uh, and it had everything in it. And the the girl emailed me. She's like, "Why? Uh, who is your midwife? I need to make sure you're getting the right kit. I'm like, well, I'm not pregnant. I'm just buying it because I might need it. 
And she goes, well, I don't understand. We're not in a shortage anymore. I'm like, I tried to explain to her, like, I just, I just need it. Like, it's, it's no big deal. And she's like, but I, I really want to make sure you're getting the right thing. And so I told her, I said, listen, I'm a prepper. <laughs> I'm prepping. I don't need it. I just like, take my money. I just want the home birth kit. It was really uh, kind of interesting when I told her I was a prepper and it was, I was adding it to my prepper stash. She didn't like that very much. She said, you know, some of this stuff expires. And I'm like, like what? And she goes, well, the eye, the eye gel. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to use that anyhow. And she's like, then why are you buying it? I said, I don't know, because it's in the home birth kit. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, it, it was a good laugh on my part. But um, I don't know that she laughed so much. But you can find good home birth kits online um, and have them delivered and just st stash it away. I really didn't even buy it for myself. I actually bought it in case someone else might need it. Uh, you know, one of my things that I really want to do is dive into midwifery studies more. Uh, that's not happening right now, but I did make the investment to buy several midwife uh, books that uh, most midwives use during their training. Because of this, this is a skill. See, in the beginning I was talking about skills. That's a skill I want to learn at least the basics of. Um, so that if this time did come, I could be of a use, you know, people are going to be having babies, right? There's not going to be contraception and all of that. Um, and so I want to be useful in that. And so anyhow, I, I really got it for, to use for someone else if, if that time ever came. So I'd have the right equipment on hand, but funny enough, I got pregnant that fall, not expecting to. And, uh, I bought another home birth kits for that birth and end up using some of the stuff in the home birth kit that I brought bought for my prepper stash. So I've got to replenish that before long. But anyhow, so something you might not think about, whether it's for yourself, for your for your daughter if you have an older daughter, or uh, for the community, um, it comes with reusable items in that home birth kit as well, like um, clamps. Depending on what kind of home birth kit you get, um, you know, a scalpel if you were to need that. You know, various different medical equipment. Okay, next is an EMT grade medical bag. Um, and so you can buy these on Amazon. I will try to link all of that information below. Um, but finding a good EMT medical bag is really, really important. Um, it has pretty much all the stuff you would need in a general emergency. Obviously, it's not going to last long if there's like, you know, a real emergency. But at least it comes with a stethoscope, blood pressure cuff, and various things like that. Uh, pencils and pens. I know that seems kind of, uh, weird, but, uh, in the book, they, they needed, um, people to write history. And that really stuck out to me. Like they were taking old books that didn't have any meaning, like novels and stuff. And they were bleaching the pages so that they could write history down. They, they were writing history. They were keeping track of everything that was happening because one day, like I said, one day the new normal will be established. There will be, life will go on. Life will absolutely go on and people would need to know what actually happened. And so people were bleaching pages in these old books and writing history. And so, um, kind of stocking up on pens and pencils because you're going to be doing a lot of writing, even if it's just writing your thoughts out for your mental health and uh, and to kind of to keep track of the weather, to keep track of the dates. You know, those are things to think about. Uh, twine. Twine is the next one. Twine comes in handy for a lot of stuff. So I don't think there's any explanation needed on that. But uh, it is good to have twine when you need to string stuff up and you can't just run to the store and grab something. Uh, next is things to barter. Um, you know, we all have the things that we like in life, but do you have extras of things that are barter barterable? I don't even know if that's a word, but things that other people might like. Um, and consider that. Like, okay, I've got this, and it's, it's good, um, but do I have enough to barter with? And the other thing is, what about your farm? Look at your farm. Uh, I could barter chicken eggs. I could barter. I could barter chickens. I could barter turkeys. I could barter geese. I could barter produce. You know, those are things I could barter. Uh, you know, we are looking at getting a milk cow uh, in 2022, and so that's something that we could barter, right? 
So there's a lot of things to think about that you could add to your farm that you could barter. Okay, the last thing I'm going to leave you with uh, is something you might not consider, uh, like things to go along with the bartering system. There, One thing that I found really interesting in the book was the necessities of of a society. And in the book, um, the, the man in the town, he goes to – uh, a local convenience store, and he buys several cases of cigarettes. And he doesn't even smoke. And the owner of the convenience store, he goes, why are you buying this when you don't even smoke? And he didn't share anything at the time because this was within the first 24 hours. But um, in the book, we see that he bartered those things. You know, when when someone has not had a cigarette in a week – or in a couple of weeks, they, they're they very motivated when they see that you have cigarettes. Um, the other thing is growing tobacco. It's it's legal to grow tobacco in most places, I assume. And um, because a lot of people will grow it for medicinal purposes. And so you can actually buy tobacco seeds. Um, and that's something you can have on hand quite frequently to barter with. Um just think about things like that uh, that you could really cash in on uh, in, a, in a time, in a crisis time like that. Okay, so that was, I feel like it was a pretty good list of things that might be unusual that you might not think about. Like, there are 10 million and one videos and podcast episodes about things you should be prepping for, beans and rice and uh, guns and ammo and all that stuff. Uh, but we never really think about the unique things that we should have on hand. And so things like your skills, um, things like books and magazines, uh, a treadle sewing machine, reloading equipment, canning items, um, maps, luxury items, all of that stuff is... <laughs> I have a little one who wants to go to sleep. Hey. You know, all of these things are really incredible that we might not think about. So think about it and add it to your your stuff because I don't think we'll regret it if that time comes and we actually have to use it. All right, guys, thanks for joining me on, on this episode of the Choosing Simple Podcast. Make sure you subscribe if you are not already subscribed. Check out all the information in the show notes below. And until next time, don't forget to choose simple.